name is Len Witt, and I blog at the PJ Net, and and I'm here with Jeff Good Goodell. Goodell, okay, Jeff Goodell, and he's author of the book. Well, I'll let him tell you a little bit about the book and where we're at. We're at the Society of Environmental Journalists annual convention in Roanoke. Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, well, I wrote a book called uh, Big Coal, um, The Dirty Secret Behind America's Energy Future. Uh, it's out in paperback now from Houghton Mifflin. i am also uh, been a staff writer at Rolling Stone for a long time and um, a contributing editor at uh, the New York Times Magazine. Okay. Jeff, one of the things, you were just on a panel with some people from Big Coal, and you said the issue wasn't necessarily saving coal. It was really saving the environment, saving the earth. Could you expand on that just a little bit? Well, I think one of the conversations that we had here this morning, we, you know, we, we, uh, a couple hundred people here uh, together to listen to this panel about coal and about, you know, what we're going to do about coal for uh, what, what role it might have in the future. And, and, and too often these kinds of conversations morph into conversations about how do we keep coal going, that that, that kind of becomes the subtext. Uh, and we talk a lot about things like carbon capture and storage and other technological fixes as if we uh, have no choice if we want to keep our civilization going that we have to figure out a way to keep burning coal. I think I was arguing that we need to make this a much broader conversation. The conversation is not about how do we keep coal going but how do we reinvent our energy system to address the challenges that we have about CO2 emissions and global warming and resource scarcity and other things. If coal can be a part of that, great. But the question is not how to keep coal going, it's how to keep us going. Okay, so you mentioned that you didn't think journalists were covering this very well. Could you just talk a little bit about that part of it? Well, I, I think that journalists are doing a good job with some of the uh, smaller regulatory issues about uh, clean air standards and things like that. But the, I think the big failure of journalism is in um, communicating what's at stake in this and communicating the scale and scope of the story. And um, that's where we're failing. We don't, we're, we're not, it's, it's very difficult to communicate that, you know, the, the entire sort of operating system for civilized life is what's at stake here and what we're, what we're trying to reinvent. Uh, with coal, if we can't figure out a way to either get off coal or fix coal, then the chances of uh, our kids living on a planet that looks anything like the planet we're on now are virtually zero. And so for journalists, the challenge is, you know, when we talk about something like coal, we talk about it in a compartmentalized way, like about air pollution perhaps, or about carbon dioxide emissions, or about mountaintop removal and the damages of that. But it's very difficult to communicate the larger picture and the larger scale of what's at stake. Okay. Uh, and my concern is, given what you just said, is because advertising is decoupling you know, from uh, <coughs> journalism enterprises, journalists are getting laid off every day, and specialty journalists, and maybe it's not really a specialty, but it's category categorized like that like environmental journalists they might be the first to go and so who is going to support journalists in the future to do the kind of work you're doing and the kind of work you're advocating for other journalists to do well, I mean, that's a big question, and we're obviously going through, especially with the way the economy is going, uh, I'm sure that a lot of magazines and newspapers, traditional media, television, are going to get hit really hard. But I'm actually quite optimistic about journalism, and, and, and um, I think that the Internet is an incredibly powerful tool, and I'm a, I'm a big believer in citizen journals, journalism and what people can do with a flip phone and, a, and with a, um, a laptop and that, that the internet offers this opportunity for um, uh, a lot of people to kind of come together and think about these issues. And I think that the question is, is how do we sort of leverage the interest in covering this kind of stuff and thinking about this uh, in a way that is accessible to a lot of people? I think we're going to see all kinds of new forms of journalism in you know the next decade or so, driven by the changes on the internet and changes in accessibility of information, and that we're going to see more kind of um, uh, ad hoc groups coming together to to write about and think about these issues. Bloggers are can, are, are obviously uh, becoming more and more influential, and I think have a huge role to play in this issue. We're seeing people using phones and cameras uh, to give witness to what's going on with the mountaintop removal destruction and things like that. 
bringing the visual imagery to people in ways that were unimaginable 10 years ago. So I, I do think that you know, um, covering this from a traditional news point of view is going to be a big challenge. But I do think that when you look at it in the bigger picture, uh, the, the changes in information technology give me a lot of hope. Good. And I'm sort of, I agree with you on a lot of all of that, but today, even on the panel, you know, you hear different opinions back and forth. And, and what about this idea, and it's not an idea, it's a long tradition of evidence-based journalism. You know, I don't want to say objective journalism, but somebody actually going out there and collecting the evidence, it's hard work. I don't think citizens can do it on their own, and I really think you need professional journalists or somebody getting paid to do this evidence-based truth, you know, striving to find the truth. And if that's in jeopardy, will the citizens be able to carry this on by themselves? Well, I don't think evidence in this uh, evidence-based truth is the is the you know exclusive province of professional journalists. I think that. Uh, a lot of bloggers, a lot of citizens are just as ethical and just as well-trained and just as uh, devoted to this as a lot of professional journalists. I think a lot of professional journalists are actually really shoddy at this because they're so stretched so thin, their deadlines are so tight, they take what the coal companies say or they take what whoever says, they, they, or they repeat wire stories or something. I think that, that um, I would challenge the notion that you know, professionalism is the domain of the professional in this world. Um, and I, I, one other point is I, I think that this, is, this whole energy and environment question is going to become so central to everything about what we do that, it's, that, that, that we're, we're just beginning to see the emergence of this. And I think it's going to increase exponentially in the next decade as these challenges get more and more severe, whether it's from you know, problems of peak oil, oil prices rising, whether it's from you know, the sudden changes in, uh, from in climate, climate legislation coming in, the politics of that. All of this stuff is going to become more and more and more central to our conversations. And so I think that you know, newspapers and magazines are obviously going to be cutting back, but I think that re professional journalists who cover this well are going to have a more and more prominent place. And I actually think that um, for a journalist as a career move, this is a very good field to be in. Okay, so this is for the headline. Are you saying that citizen journalism could save the environment? Absolutely. I think citizen journalism, I think the, uh, I mean, I'm, and I, I speak of this as someone who, uh, my network of information that I get where I do research and people I talk to, I mean, I find that, you know, bloggers, citizen journalists who are involved in this issue are often far more knowledgeable than other journalists than other uh, uh, industry types. I think this is an incredibly valuable resource. You have people who work in the oil industry, for example, who, who will do blogs, who will be able to parse the information in ways that no journalist that I know is able to parse, and they, put the, they, and they write about it on, on their blogs. I mean, you still have a huge um, responsibility as for someone like me as a journalist writing about this to parse this information to make sure that these sources that you're looking at are accurate and true and, and all incredible. But yes, I think that, w that um, in fact, one of the things I wanted to try to communicate here today is that everybody, not just professional journalists, but everybody needs to be thinking about this problem of coal and, and, and beginning to parse the information and looking more at this whole notion of carbon capture and storage and is it real and what is the role of coal in the future. And I think that needs to be a broader conversation, which means citizen journalists and journalists and everyone else. And if it's just the domain of professional journalists, I think that's uh, a failure. All right. Well, thank you very much. This has been really uh, an enlightening conversation. Thank you. Thanks.